Welcome this morning. Thank you for joining us. It's good to have everyone online and in the room. It is good to be in God's house this morning. We're going to begin with our scripture reading this morning. Romans chapter 8, verse 17 says, if, And if children, then heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, we must also be glorified together. And this scripture talks about how we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Psalms 2, verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Now he's talking to Jesus. But, like Romans says, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Ask of me and I will give the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. This world, like I told the youth on Tuesday, the world was created so that Jesus could obtain an inheritance from this earth. That's why we're here. We're not here because of all the, uh, you know, we're not just going to go in their grave and be dead. We're not going to go uh, and die to some other belief. We were created for this purpose. We are to be given to God. And this morning, be encouraged. Let's pray that this be fulfilled, that the <coughs> earth that the world, the people, be given as an inheritance unto Jesus Christ, unto the church, unto us. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to worship this morning. Thank you again for joining us. And the people of the world are his inheritance. Amen. So we got a job to do. We got a job to do, and we're going to sing, and we're going to get all excited, and we are going to go and tell people about Jesus Christ, that he still is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Amen. Woo. All right. We're going to get all excited, going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to get all excited, going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to get all excited. I'm going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Oh, I'm going to get all excited. I'm going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I'm going to get all excited. I'm going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I'm going to get all excited. I'm going to tell everybody that. Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Come on, oh, get all excited, go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited, go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. I'm gonna get all excited, go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. He saved just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord will do. Look what the Lord will do. He He'll heal your body. He'll, He'll touch your mind. mind. He'll, He'll save you just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. He say he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look, look what, what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. 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 He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Just in time, oh, I'm going to praise his name. Each day is just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what, what the Lord has done. Look what he will do. Look what the Lord will do. Look what the Lord will do. Heal my body and heal your mind. He'll save you just in time, oh, I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. 
Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you. Let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The Heavenly Father. The beginning and the end. Much more than this, my friend. He's the Son of Man. He's coming, coming back, back again. again. I know Jesus is the Father. I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. All these three are one. Let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The Heavenly Father. The beginning and the end. Much more than this, my friend. He's the Son of Man. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look, look what the Lord has done. Look, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. He saves just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. I know Jesus is the Father. I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. All these three are one. Let me tell you who Jesus is. He's a rock of all ages. He's a He's a son of man. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. The beginning and the, the beginning end. And the end. Much more than this, oh, my much friend. Much more than this, my He's friend. He's a son of man. He's a son of man. He's coming, coming back, back again. again. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Heavenly Father. And the end. Much more than this, my friend. He's the Son of Man. He's coming back again. Just from I know Jesus is the Father. I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. All these three are one. Let me tell you who Jesus is. He's a rock of all ages. The beginning and the Omega. He's the Heavenly Father. The beginning and the end. Much more than this, my friend. He's the Son of Man. I know Jesus is the Father. I know Jesus is the Son. I know Jesus is the Holy Ghost. All these three are one. Let, Let me tell, tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Heavenly Father, the beginning. Son of man, he's coming back again. Son of man, he's the son of man. He's coming back again. He's the son of man.
every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the 
worship his majesty unto Jesus be all glory honor and praise majesty kingdom of Jesus, we worship you today as our King, our God. Lord, we surrender our lives to you, Jesus. We want to serve you in your kingdom, Jesus. Lord, not children of the darkness, but God, children of the light. Not children of the sea, but God, children of the earth that are living the kingdom of God for you, Jesus. God, we pray, Lord Jesus, for boldness. Lord, to spread your word, spread your truth, Jesus. We thank you for this wonderful day, God. In your precious name, amen. amen. Everyone said amen. amen. You may find your seats this morning. I'd like to welcome our pastor up to share God's word this morning. Let's find our seats. Thank you again for joining us. It's good to have everyone on this wonderful Sunday.
We're going to be talking this morning about God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> imparting his belief, his faith, his glory, and his presence to mankind. Okay? We're going to go to John chapter 21, verse 25 where we read, there are many other things Jesus did. If they were written one by one, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Chapter 20, verse 30. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. Number one, Jesus is doing miraculous miracles, miraculous signs that only God can do, okay? And all of these signs, all of these miraculous events are not written in this book, the Gospel of John. Not written in the Gospel of John. But these are written in the Gospel of John. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, prophesied to come. These are written. The Holy Spirit moved John to write all that you need to hear to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the anointed one, the Christ. And all of these words that God chose to put in the Gospel of John. So you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God, born of a virgin. Okay? The only begotten Son of God. And, number four, that believing that he is the Christ, believing he is the Son of God, believing these signs and miraculous things he did, you may have life in his name. Both natural life and eternal life in his name. God wants to bless you with eternal life in the world to come, but he also wants to provide for you here on this earth and give you a joyful, abundant life, as it says in the scriptures. Have life and life abundantly. So we see that John tells us why the book of John was written at the end of the book. But Luke tells us why the Gospel of Luke was written at the beginning of the book. It seemed good to me, having had perfect understanding of all things. See, all things that Jesus did, all things that <clears throat> Jesus said, all these events, from the very first, from the very beginning, to write to you an orderly account. So Luke starts off with Zechariah and Elizabeth, an angel visiting them, going to have a son, call him John. He's going to be the forerunner of Christ. Then the angel comes to Mary in orderly fashion. And he continues that orderly fashion in the book of Acts. So we know that the Holy Spirit gave John the words for you to believe in Jesus Christ, not a church, not a minister, in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you can have abundant life and eternal life. And we know that Luke was ordered by the Holy Spirit to do the same thing, 
having perfect understanding, complete understanding. There's that word perfect. Everybody says, we can't be perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. If you know the word perfect there means mature, complete, you don't get razzled about it, okay? He has complete understanding of everything. So, we're going to be talking about belief different than we're accustomed to hearing it. You're accustomed to hearing that if you believe, anything is impossible for you. If you believe, you can get healed from sickness. If you believe, you can get filled with the Holy Ghost. If you believe, you know, God will find you a job. If you believe, everything is up to your belief, your faith. Okay? Because Jesus said that a few times. And for decades, ministers have gotten away with saying, God's going to heal you. God's going to do this and that for you. And when it didn't happen, then they could say, well, it's because you didn't have enough faith. You didn't believe. Let's look how God wrote it. Okay? Let's look how God wrote it. God said... Everything in the Gospel of John was written so you may believe. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And through that belief, you will have life, both a natural life and a spiritual life forever in the world to come. So, <clears throat> we're going to show that believing in Jesus comes from God. You don't conjure up the belief. You don't conjure up the faith so you can get God to do things. He conjures up faith in you. Belief in you. All right? Now, also, as you know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing God's word. So faith itself isn't something you can conjure up. See, some people believe there is no God, and they hear that, they put their faith there is no God. See, some people believe that the earth is still flat. All right? They hear it, they believe it. Faith comes by anything you hear that you put your confidence in, your persuasion in. You see, the Hindus, as I said before, they wash their hands in cow urine, and they sprinkle their vegetables with cow manure because they believe it cleanses and sanctifies them. Why? Because they were taught that. See, faith comes by anything you hear that you give yourself to. But the faith of God comes from hearing the truth. Hallelujah. Not men's doctrines, truth. So, Believing in Jesus comes from God. We're going to go to the scriptures. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's exactly what John told us he wrote the gospel for, wasn't it? So you believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. Peter here says, you are the Christ in Matthew the Son of God. See, where did he get that belief from? Where did he get it from? Jesus answered Peter and says, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. See, mankind can't reveal this unto you. You yourself can't reveal that unto you. Intellect can't do it. You can, you can intellect all you want. It will not reveal Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus plainly says, But my Father which is in heaven, He revealed that to you, Peter. He gave you that faith. He gave you that belief. He gave you that revelation. It wasn't your righteousness or your faith. It's God put that there. Can I hear an amen? amen? It is best to seek God until God reveals himself 
So you increase your belief, increase your faith, that you don't put your faith in a church or in mankind or in science or anything else but the truth. Could that be an amen? That's in Matthew 16, 16. So let's take a look at faith being built as God reveals. The more God reveals himself, the more belief builds. The more God reveals, the more belief builds. Let's go and watch the progressiveness of belief in this gospel of John that was written for us to believe. All right? In John 1, 45, and to set the atmosphere here, Jesus had already been baptized. Already the dove came down and filled him with the Holy Spirit. The voice from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He already was driven into the desert for 40 days to be tested of the devil. Now he comes out of the desert. And he is walking by John the Baptist baptizing people and preaching this message. As the forerunner of Christ. And then Jesus walks by and John stops what he's doing and says, look at there. That is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. This is the one that the dove and baptism of the Holy Spirit came upon from heaven. This is the one that the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now he is speaking that and there's a multitude around him and he's baptizing people and he stops and said that statement. And then two of, his, two of John the Baptist's disciples, one of them was Andrew, didn't give the name of the other. When they heard John preach that message, say that Jesus was the one, the lamb, that to take away the sin of the world, the dove came, the voice from heaven came, two out of that whole crowd, two, stopped following John the Baptist and they started following Jesus. Now, folks, there's a message right there. We're supposed to be following Jesus. But what made the difference between these two and the rest of the crowd there? The rest of the crowd there didn't follow. Just two. Because the Father came and revealed that to them. That made the difference. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven, revealed this to you. So these two guys followed Jesus. And they went to where Jesus was, and when they got there, Andrew went and got Peter, his brother, and brought him to Jesus. Peter, I mean, Andrew went and told Peter, we found the Messiah. We found the Christ. And Peter believed his brother Andrew and came to Jesus. Now, what caused Peter to suddenly stop what he was doing and come to Jesus? God the Father revealed Jesus to him through the message of Andrew. Amen? Faith comes by hearing the word. Andrew shared it. Now we got another disciple. Now we got three of his 12 disciples. Now, this brings us to John chapter 1, verse 45. The very next day, Jesus asked Philip to follow him. And Philip just stopped. These, these guys just stopped what they're doing. And they followed. Why? Why? Because the Father 
revealed to them, put faith in them, put belief in them that this was the Christ, the Messiah to come, the Son of God, and He is the one that can give life now and eternal life forever. So Philip started following, and then Philip, when they were taking a break or something, I guess, he ran over to his brother Nathaniel. And Nathaniel, when he got to Nathaniel, Nathaniel was in the, under a fig tree. And he told Nathaniel, Hey, we found him. The one who Moses and all the prophets wrote about. We found him. The prophet. The king. The Messiah. The Son of God. We found him. And he's... Name is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So what does Nathanael do? Nathanael responds by saying, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now everybody's made a sermon out of all of this, but basically this is the summation of this. When you go and look for Nazareth in the Old Testament, you find zero. There's nothing there. Except Nazareth, which was created later a city, was in the area of Galilee, the area of Zebulun, the tribe of Zebulun and Nephtali. And Isaiah said that Galilee is going to be a burnt marsh. I just, you know. And King Solomon, when he built the temple of God, and Tyre, the king of Tyre, a heathen king, helped him with supplying helpers and uh, materials and stuff. After it was all done, he gave the king of Tyre cities in Galilee, 20 cities in Galilee. Well, the king of Tyre came over and looked at these cities in Galilee, and he was displeased. He didn't like them. So you can see why Nathaniel, if he'd read the scripture, would go, can anything good come out of Nazareth, come out of this area? But Isaiah had said, in the area of Galilee, of Naphtali, a great light will be shown to the people. Wow. And so Jesus is in Nazareth of Galilee. Hallelujah. Fulfilling that scripture. A great light. See. And, and this fits us all. We all have our questions. That we, we got a little knowledge of the Bible, and when somebody says something, we go, well, how, how about this? Or, well, how about that? Don't we? Yeah. <clears throat> so, Philip answers and says, Brother, come and see. Come and look for yourself. And lo and behold, that message that Philip brought his brother caused his brother Nathaniel to come to see Jesus. And who put that faith in him? The Father. The Father in heaven put the faith in him. Amen? See, when the Father puts faith in you and belief in you, yeah, it's easy to, man, you're on fire. You're, you're, you get assertive. When we try to muster up our own faith and stuff, we have a lot of letdowns. You ever notice that? <clears throat> I know I can do this. And I know this is right, and then bam, didn't work. So, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him. And Jesus said to Nathanael, Behold, an Israelite, didn't say Jew, an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit, no deception, no lying. Okay? And my Baptist friends say, Well, we can't be perfect. You, you got everybody sins, you know, and all this. And I show them that Elizabeth and Zechariah were blameless before God and righteous. 
I go through the Bible and show them all kinds of people that were blameless and righteous. And God called some of them perfect, complete. Okay? So if you can find one opposite truth to their belief, their belief is neutralized. Are you there? <laughs> you don't save people from sin to tell them they got to sin. That just makes no sense. Hallelujah. And my Baptist friends are good people. Don't get me wrong. But we can't convert people to be a Baptist. We can't convert people to be a Pentecostal. We can't convert people to the Catholic Church. we got to convert people to follow Jesus. Now that is a big amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now. So, Nathaniel said to Jesus, how do you know me? How did you know all that? And Jesus replied, before Philip called you, gave you the message, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. People, Jesus sees you. Wherever you're at, he sees you. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're thinking. He sees you. And he wants to get the message to you. So the Father can put the faith and belief that will draw you to Him. See, these messengers didn't say, go to the temple priest, go to the Jewish rabbi. They said, go and see who? Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen? Hallelujah. So, and then the... Philip gets a surge of faith and belief here. Watch this. When Jesus said these words, a supernatural statement, I saw you under the fig tree. Jesus didn't see him physically under the fig tree. Philip went and found him. Jesus didn't naturally see him. Jesus saw him through the Spirit, supernaturally saw that, you see. So Jesus... When he made this statement, a surge. Remember, the more God reveals, the more belief builds. Amen? It is a step, a staggering growth. From We go from faith to faith. We grow. So now Nathaniel says, Rabbi! He didn't call him Rabbi up here. Rabbi means master, means my master, and to be complete, my master teacher. You are my master, and you are my teacher. It's not the priest. It wasn't Philip that came down with the message, you're the teacher, You've, you're the message, and God has ignited, he has revealed to me, you are not only the Messiah, you are the master. Isn't that beautiful? Why? Because the Father put it in him. Jesus didn't say, now if you believe, I'll, I'll show you great and mighty things. No. The Father put the belief in him and Philip is responding to this. I mean, Nathaniel. You are the Son of God, just like John and just like uh, the other one said, the Son of God. But now he says, you are the king of Israel. Now he adds a revelation. You're not just a prophet. You're not just the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. You're not just the son of God. You're the master and you're the king. You see how faith is building, how belief is building because they heard the message. They saw a small miracle of Christ that could see where you were without being there. And the Father put a surge of belief and faith in him and opened up his understanding to the knowledge that he is the master. He is the king as well as the son of God. Amen. But yet, for decades, ministers have been saying, if you believe, 
If you believe, if you believe, if you have faith, if you have faith, if you have faith. How much faith does Lazarus have? Zero. How much faith did the widow's son have that was dead? Zero. Who do we think we are trying to put a little formula into this thing? Are you with me? Hallelujah. Remember, only two in the crowd when John the Baptist saw Jesus left and followed Jesus. Why? Because that's who the Father put the faith in at that time. It doesn't mean that the rest, he wasn't going to do that. It just meant at that time. Amen? How many want the Father to put more faith and belief in you? Yes, reveal more. Yes, from Him. Not from human intellect. Not from flesh and blood, from Him. This is a supernatural walk we are in. A supernatural church that He's put us in. So, <clears throat> we see how faith and belief has increased in these guys. Jesus said, because I said I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You see, Jesus recognized his belief came from God. Because the Father told him to speak those words. And then the Father brought the faith in him, the belief in him. You got it? Amen? Yeah. He says, let me tell you something, Nathaniel. You're going to see greater things than this. You're going to see greater things than these things. Does God want to show us as church people, as individual Christians, greater things? Yes. Does he want us to progress in God? Yes. Absolutely. And only he can progress us. Yes. John, John was right when he wrote that. God took all the millions of words and all the hundreds of thousands of things Jesus did and God put it in the Gospel of John. <clears throat> now, Jesus said, Hereafter you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And it was true. The Bible says the angels came and ministered to Jesus. How many would like some angels to come and minister to you? Hey, I... I could handle that. I could handle that. Hallelujah. I need something to juice me up. My hard-headed brain of mine, it, that's God's biggest hindrance is me. How about you? <clears throat> yeah. You know, an angel would sure wake me up. Mm, well, now. <clears throat> but we don't go bragging about the angel. We get the message of the angel. All right. Now, Continue with the more God reveals, the more belief builds. Okay? Now to set the stage for this next verse, in John chapter 2, verse 11, Jesus traveled a little bit from Nazareth to Canaan. They're pretty close. Short walk. And there they were having a wedding, and they ran out of wine, and he changed the water to wine. And uh, we pick it up here. here. This is the third day. Third day since John the Baptist said he was the Son of God. All right? The water to wine, it says here, was the beginning of the signs, the miracles, the miraculous things that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. Remember in our last session, we saw that Lazarus being raised from the dead was the revelation of the glory of God. A miracle is a revelation of God's glory. Do we need more of God's glory in the church? Absolutely. Can we have it? Yes. Yes. We can have it. Why don't we have it? Yeah. Must be God's fault, huh? <laughs> Couldn't be us. Couldn't be us hard-headed followers. 
Now, when they saw the water change to wine, it says his disciples believed in him. Well, they already believed. Didn't they? We already saw they believed. What is it, though? A surge of more faith, more belief, because God revealed more of himself. Ah, I could almost speak in tongues there. You see, it is powerful. But we get our eyes, I, I got to believe, I, 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 I got to pray hard enough, I got to quench my faith tighter, I got to name it, I got to claim it. No, we need to yield to God and let Him begin to reveal these things and our faith will naturally ascend in the things of the truth of God. Hallelujah. Just natural. <laughs> now, so their faith is be being expanded. Now in verse 23, he goes down to Jerusalem. He's at the Passover where they killed the Passover lamb, who he is. The Passover lamb was a, sim a, a shadow of Christ to come. And this is where the Baptists and the Catholics and all of them do not understand their Bible. They don't understand their Bible at all. And I converse with them all the time. And the Baptists are so strong and we're not under law, we're under grace. I said, what is wrong with the law thou shalt not kill? What, what, what is wrong with that law? Thou shalt not steal. What's wrong with that law? The Bible in Psalms 19 verse 7 says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. What's wrong with a law that is perfect and converts me? Do we need conversion? Yes. Yeah. It's the shadow laws we're not under. Christ fulfilled the shadow laws. He is the lamb. We don't need no Passover lamb. We don't need animal sacrifices anymore. We don't need no natural temple anymore. We are the temple. All those shadow laws have been fulfilled. And it's very hard for the Baptists and the Catholics and the Presbyterian mainline denominations and most Pentecostals to understand that we are under the law of God. This is the love of God that we what? Keep His laws. And his laws are not grievous. Amen? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my laws. Didn't he? But we go to Paul over here, who's trying to straighten out something in the church, and we make a religion out of it. We just put people into bondage. We're going to get to that in a minute. At this Passover feast, hundreds of thousands of people came to keep the shadow law. You've got to understand that. There's a lot of Jews down here in Jerusalem. And it says, during that time, many of these Jews that came for the Passover lamb saw the real lamb. God revealed the real lamb to them, and they believed in Jesus' name when they saw the signs which Jesus did. See, the chief priests and all the priests, they couldn't do anything. All they could do is talk. But the kingdom is not in talk, it's in what? Power. And so thousands of people believed in Christ. In His name, the name of Jesus, of Nazareth. There's a lot of Jesuses around at that time. It's imperative that they understood it was Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. That Jesus. <laughs> you understand that? That's why the Bible is pretty consistent saying Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus Christ and not some other Jesus. <clears throat> but Jesus would not commit himself to them because he knew all men and what was in men. As the musicians come, we're going to wrap this message up. Please listen to this. All right? 
Jesus would not commit himself to them because he knew what was in man. What does that mean? What is Jesus saying? He's saying we're a bunch of knuckleheads. And we are. We're going to go to John chapter 6, verse 2, and then 14. Multitudes followed Jesus when they saw the signs he did. Here's these signs, you see, that John talked about. So many of them, you couldn't put them in books that the world could hold. That's a lot of stuff, folks. That's a lot of things he was doing. They believed. And they followed Jesus. Now they're not just believing in his name, they're following Jesus. You see the progression of belief in them? See, they're not just believing in his name. Now they're following Christ when they saw the signs. And that's why the glory of the Lord being revealed through the miraculous is important. See, and it's not just healing the sick and all that, just the revelation of the word or, or a, a word of revelation just that only God can do. Now, verse 14. When the crowd saw the sign of the loaves and the fishes. Jesus saw the crowd was hungry, so he feeds them. He breaks the fish and he breaks the loaves and fed, fed thousands of people with just a few loaves and fishes. When they saw that, the crowd said, this is truly the prophet. See now, they not only believe in his name, they're not only a follower, but now they know he is what? The prophet who is to come. That faith is progressing. Do you see that? And who is it coming from? The Father. They're not trying to read enough scriptures to get enough faith, trying to work up some kind of faith. The Father is putting the faith and belief in them progressively. How many want, really want that? Even though you've been in Christ for 30 years, could you use some progressive faith and belief? Amen. Amen. Now, here's the problem. When Jesus perceived that they were about to take him by force to make him king, you see, he knew what was in man. We want. To take the things of God. Now, they believed that the Messiah was going to be a man that was going to be a king that was going to rule over Israel, defeat all their enemies, and bring peace to the world. They had the first coming all figured out, just like we got the second coming all figured out. We just all know exactly what's going to happen. And the Bible says we, we don't know. But yet, we have some special revelation, though. You know, we have special revelation. And so they wanted, to, they wanted to take their natural Jewish faith, doctrines of faith of the Jews at that time, was the Messiah would come, and he would be a king, and he would defeat all the enemies in war with swords and spears and air bows and arrows and all that, and bring peace to the whole earth. They did not understand that Jesus was coming to build a spiritual kingdom, that kingdom was in people, <laughs> and he was going to destroy the kingdom of darkness and bring peace to those who accepted his message and entered his kingdom. Amen? They totally missed it. But they were going to force, they were going to make Jesus do what their belief said he should do. Even though they had this much faith, they missed it here, didn't they? And Jesus said he knows what's in man. Now let me give you a little advice. There's a big difference between the gospel of Paul and the gospel of Jesus. 
Paul's letters were written to correct the church and answer questions in the church. The gospel were written that you might believe and have life. Are you there? So what is the big problem with the churches today? Paul's epistle. Jesus never said anything about cutting your hair. Jesus never said anything about wearing pants. They weren't even invented. Jesus didn't say anything about women being silent. Did he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus didn't say anything about you got to put something on your head to come in and pray. Did he? The Jews wear something on their head now. They wear it all day long because they don't understand. And many churches today, you've got to put something on your head. Women do. They put the, everything on women. Most everything's put on women. Women can't wear jewelry. Women can't wear makeup. Women can't cut their hair. Women got to have clothes down to their ankles. Women this, women that. But the men seem to be okay. This is the gospel according to Paul, but not because Paul meant it that way. He was trying to correct things and answer questions in the church. And we today take his stuff and silence women. Now, how is, how is Stephen's four daughters going to be prophets if they have to be silent? How do you, how do, you do that? Are you there? They were prophetesses. Plainly says, and I can go on down the line. How is Priscilla going to teach Apollo, who was a, a disciple of John the Baptist and he needed a more perfect uh, gospel about Jesus, how is, he go, how is she going to share with Apollo if women got to be silent? And we, we take these things, and the church is so divided. Over nonsense. Amen? Does the Bible say God is not a respecter of persons? The scripture we read earlier at the beginning of the service, are we all heirs of Christ Jesus? And that inheritance means everything he gives, he gives to every one of us. Are you out there? You see, we make converts, as I said earlier, Baptists, Pentecostals, Catholics, Presbyterians. That's what we're doing. That's the problem in American church world is we're making converts to a church group instead of converts to Jesus Christ. We are following a church group. If I have my beanie on my head, I'm accepted. Are you there? If I'm a silent woman in the church, in this group, I'm accepted. So we're trying to please men, flesh and blood, instead of the Father who reveals faith and belief to us and causes that faith and belief to grow. And the problem with the church in America is we are bringing converts to what we believe. You don't have to be a member of these churches. You can be a non-denominational, a home Bible study group, but you are telling people you got to line up to your man-made doctrines and they got to toe the line or you aren't part of the elect, the select of the elect. Are you there? John said, all you need to find eternal life and live an abundant life here and know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and the Son of God is the words in my gospel and the other gospels are the same thing plus nothing. Now that would get rid of a lot of division. 
if we would get back to the Gospel of John. Could that be an amen? Now, folks, signs are important. And I've told you over and over, this is for all believers. These signs shall follow them that believe. That Those that have God put that belief in, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall cast out demons. <clears throat> uh, if they drink any deadly thing, bad things happen. They're, they're not going to be touched. They shall... Uh, what's the next one? What? What? Oh, serpents, yes. Uh, and uh, cast out demons, heal the sick, speak in tongues. They shall speak in tongues. We fight over tongues. <laughs> the Bible plainly says believers will what? Speak in tongues. Does that mean all of them will speak in tongues? No, Paul painted that plain. Not all speak in tongues. Tongues is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are churches that say if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. That's stupid. That's just plain stupid. And there are churches that say the tongues are the only sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is dumb. They happen to speak in tongues four out of five times when the Bible uh, writes about it. But if you want a sign about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> Peter made it plain. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old man will dream dreams. Your young man will see visions. Come on! And it doesn't say that's the sign either. It never says, except you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you to be witnesses unto me. That's the sign. Power that a housewife needs to run a household. Power that a husband needs to work at a job and provide for the family. Power that children need to grow up in a darkened world. Power. Proof that there's a Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I don't care what your need is today. He is the healer of the mind, the body, and the soul. He is the Savior of your sins. If you haven't accepted Christ... You can ask Him to come into your life, forgive you of your sins, and He will do it. You don't need some program. You don't need some five-step procedure. You just talk to God, talk to Christ. Amen? The church in America needs a visitation of God. Is that an amen? This church needs a visitation of God. We need our faith and belief in everything coming from God. We got people sick in our church and people we know. God wants to heal them. There's people that say the signs and wonders stop when the apostles died. That is stupid. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God loves us. He wants us to have abundant life. He wants us to know God. He wants to give us these things. But we can't be like these Jews that believed, followed, and knew he was the prophet, and then wanted him to fit into their little mold that they created. Wow, that was good. I don't care how bad you feel about yourself, how unworthy you feel about yourself, the Jesus that John wrote about says he'll heal you. He'll heal your mind. He'll heal your soul. He'll heal your spirit. He'll heal your body. And he wants to because he wants people to believe. He wants people to come to him. There's an old song that we sing. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others. He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. John's gospel made sure it was no secret. Amen? Can God heal you today? 
Can he save you today? Can he use you today? Yes. Is the inheritance for all believers? Yes. Absolutely. If you want anything from God today, stand with me and let's sing this song. <clears throat> like it's meant to be, we need a miracle. It is no secret.
Touch the church of America. Touch the government of America. Reveal your glory. What God can do. Yes, yes. It is no secret. Bring corrupt government officials down for us. Raise up righteous ones. Touch every church in America with the glory of the Lord being revealed in supernatural way. With our final Loving us, giving us his inheritance, for causing faith to rise within us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the faith you've given us. Thank you for the belief you've given us. Thank you for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that only you can give us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving all the glory to the Father. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. You never diminish the Father. It is the Father that does the great works in you, and it's the Father that does the great works in us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, let all the earth praise the Lord. Father, in closing, we just asked you as individuals this day, to shake us loose from the beliefs we have that come from men. Flesh and bones doesn't reveal these things, Lord. The greatest pastor in America, he can't do anything but preach the gospel. It's the Father that opens the door of faith and belief opens the revelation of Jesus Christ, the wisdom, the knowledge, and everything that's in God. And Lord, we are our biggest enemies. We come up with some of the craziest faith ideas as individuals. We don't need a church telling us these man-made things. We, we dream them up ourselves. But Lord, today, we commit to following you. We commit, Lord, to standing on the Gospels and the Old Testament. Lord, everything in the Gospels came from the Old Testament. And Lord, we just ask you to give us wisdom in handling the epistles these things that divide us, the second coming, we're so divided over. How a worship service is to be done, we're so divided over. Lord, get us back to the simplicity of following Christ, allowing Him to put the faith and belief in us progressively and to do miracles in our life. Lord, we don't have to see a miraculous healing of the body or walking in water for a miracle. Just Jesus saying, Nathaniel, I saw you under the fig tree before you ever come to me. And that ignited Nathaniel's faith. Peter heard Andrew speak 
of you. And it ignited his faith to stop what he was doing and come to see you and follow you. Jesus, you and the Father are one. And you plainly said, the works that I do, I don't do on my own. It's the Father in me that does the works. Lord, we give recognition to the Father, we give recognition to you, and we give recognition to the Holy Ghost. And yet you are one God. But you meet with us in these three dimensions. Jesus is the Savior. Lord, let the peace of God that passes understanding come upon your people here. That confidence that they can serve God all the days of their life progressively growing in faith, in truth, and belief. And to a complete, mature Christian that doesn't divide, doesn't quarrel, doesn't fight over foolish things. But their whole aim is to lift up Jesus, the one the Father used to bring the message of salvation to the world, eternal life to the world, Thank you, Father. Amen. Just raise your hands with me. Just, just saying, Lord, I receive new faith, new belief from God. I heard this message. I lift my hands by faith. I lift my hands as an act of faith, saying, Lord, here I am. Impart faith. Belief, your glory, and your presence unto me. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching us on uh, Facebook. Mike's going to come and dismiss the service. Dear. Miracles happen, that mountains still move, and demons must flee. For the God that we serve, He is much more than able. Yes, He is. Don't be afraid. Stand up and say, I dare to believe. There's a miracle inside you. It's just a mustard seed of faith. By the mighty hand of God now You know that time is deep with grace And though the world may try to crush you They can never keep you down Soon the voice that's deep inside you Will come breaking through the ground So dare to believe That miracles happen That mountains still move Sir, he is much more than able, so don't be afraid. Stand up and say, I dare to believe. So don't be, so don't be afraid. Stand up and say, I dare to believe. One more time. Oh, don't be afraid. Stand up and say, I dare to believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That was our offering song. Let's bow our heads and pray. Miss Stephanie, will you please pray for the offering? Lord God, that you would help it to continue and grow, 
what we, the programs we have going on here, Lord Jesus, for your glory, Lord God. Jesus, that we would be able to continue to get your word out here locally, but also across the world, Lord God. There's things that we don't understand how it works, but we know we're reaching places across this world, Lord Jesus. I just pray you would help this offering to grow, to uh, increase that, Lord Jesus, and help us, Lord God, to also grow in your word, to grow past our salvation and grow in your promises, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, as you know, next week is our annual business meeting, starting right after service. Um, the uh, the board nominees are Rita Thompson, Michael Silla, Stephanie Silla, Paul Gomez, Vince, and Tony Barnes. We have some legal issues from last year, and we're that's why we have the same crew. It, it's helpful because they're current on all the the things that happened in the last year. Uh, we had a delay because of the pandemic, so we appreciate you guys being flexible with us, waiting till Feb end of February. Um, you should have received an email to vote. If not, you can vote in person here when the day comes. Uh, I need some help cleaning up afterwards, so if you guys can help put chairs up, just push them forward or push them out to the side, uh, help with the pads, putting the pads away, and we want to we want to make sure that the school is back to the way it was uh, before we showed up. Uh, yes, please. Thank you again for joining us. God bless.